Hello and welcome back to a new session of where I explain NiFi basics or big data and stream processing basics in general. Last time we built a very simple data flow in NiFi by using the query database table record processor and the put file processor to get data from a MySQL database and write them into a local file because my NIFA instance runs locally. Now we want to add uh, a new processing step today by taking the data that we have, which looks like this, two columns, ID and name, three rows at the moment from this table. Basically this ID, name, key, value, pairs, and enrich it with the name of a Pokemon based on the ID. So that a record looks something like this. And we want to use the public Poke API for that. As you can see, it's a URL, a RESTful service that we can use to look up Pokemon based on their ID, for example, number six. And we get all the abilities, names, versions, games they appeared in, and much more information. For us, we want to use only the name for this demo and enrich the ID and the name of a person with the Pokemon name. So again, that a record, a sample record looks like this. For this, we only need to add one more processor, which is called lookup record processor. And before we put anything to a file, we put it through the lookup record processor. And once this is successful, we want to write it into a file or anywhere else. This is just an example where we put it into a file. So first we need to configure the lookup record processor. We know that data from the previous processor is Avro, so we read it as Avro with all the defaults and not using a schema registry. We want to write it again as an Avro. This is totally fine. I've already created the Avro writer with the defaults and enabled it nothing fancy. And the main thing that we are configuring here is the lookup service. I've already created a Pokemon lookup service, but the Pokemon look lookup service is just create a new service. One of those many services based on the rest lookup service. So as you can see, we could look up data from any key value store, HBase, Elastic, uh, CSV files, IP lookup service, uh, simple key value lookup service. We're going to use the REST lookup service. And I've already created, as I said, I've already created one, so I'm not going to create a new REST lookup service, but use the one that I've created and configure it. It's not yet configured, it's not yet enabled. We're going to look into that in a few seconds. So. We only want to use uh, the Pokemon name and I want to insert the name into a new field that's called Pokemon so that it once again looks like this Pokemon name. So that's why we configuring the result record path. As a as a strategy, uh, we route to success, that's fine. And we, we're going to insert, insert the entire record. That's totally correct now. So now we're going to configure the Pokemon lookup service. It's currently um, enabled. Let's disable it so that we can change configuration. This is the URL I showed you. And this is the parameter we're using as the ID. 
it's not yet in the lookup record, but we will we will add it later on. It's called poke ID, and we use it as a variable in here. Since the result of this rest call, the response of this rest call is a JSON, we're going to use a default JSON tree reader as the record reader here. And we want to only use the name of that JSON, nothing else, just the name of that Pokemon as a result. Since it's HTTPS and not HTTP, we also need to use a SSL context service, super simple default, it's already up and running and configured. I've created a trust store here, I added the certificate of this website, uh, set the trust store password, the trust store type, check yes, and uh, enabled it. So let's have a final look at the configuration. There's nothing more that we need to do here. This should work as it is configured and therefore we enable it. Once it's enabled, we go back into the lookup record processor. And as I said, we need to tell the lookup service somehow what the poke ID is that it should look up. So what we do here is to set the poke ID key to the value of the ID of the incoming flow file. The value of the ID of the incoming flow file is basically this ID. And we then convert it to the variable called poke ID and use the poke ID to do the rest call. We still have um, the failure relationship that we need to terminate. We don't care about failures. Error handling is something we don't use for this demo. So we are set to go now. Um, starting only the query database record so that we can have a look at what we got. List queue. And we should have all the records in one flow file, which is the case. So um, starting the lookup record processor and it should work and give us an output one flow file, view as an Avro, where each of the records has an, a Pokemon assigned based on the ID. That's great. So exactly what we wanted. And as a test, I'll just insert a new statement into our database. Uh, one with Poke ID maybe 21, a new name uh, like let's use Thomas, and we should, when we refresh the UI, have an, a second flow file in the queue already, nine seconds old, number two, as an Avro file number 21, Thomas, and the Pokemon Sparrow is assigned. And you can use any kind of lookup services, not only the REST lookup services uh, like this, you can use this to do any kind of enrichments to any kind of flow files, record-based flow files in our case, um, and yeah, enrich join data that you have based on certain keys and parameters. One of the advanced features, just before I stop this video, one of the advanced features is that you can, of course, add as many parameters you want here. So if you have 100 parameters um, or 100 fields in your base record, you can define them here and they will then be used or can be used in a query in this URL. Maybe you don't only have uh, Pokemon, but maybe you also want to have um, an enrichment of the abilities. So you would then uh, parameterize uh, the ability and maybe the game ID and whatever you want to look up um, based on multiple 
parameters that come with your records. I hope that was useful.